So to get started, I'm going to initialize a new Next.js app and I'm going to use the command line to do that. If you don't have this installed, you can install this globally and I'll leave a link to the show notes on how to do that. So I'm going to run npm init next app and I'm going to give my app a name. So I'm just going to say stripe with Next.js. Now this is installed, I will cd into that directory and we're ready to get going. I'm going to create a new folder called pages and I'm also going to create a new file inside of pages called checkout.js. I'm going to open this in my code editor. Inside of checkout.js, we're just going to scaffold a basic page. This will literally just return the props that we passed down and right now they're on. on. And next we can run npm run dev or yarn dev to run the Next.js development server. And if we open this on port 3000, you will see we have a default page. And if we change the route to checkout, you'll see that we have the props that we passed down and then rendered to the page. Now I'm going to stop the server and now we need to install the Stripe dependency. Now that it's installed at the top of my checkout.js page, I will import Stripe. Next, to create the payment intent, we are going to do that on the server. And Next.js gave to us in 9.3 the new get server side props lifecycle method, which means that is then instantiated and only ran on the server. So if we export a new const called get server side props, and we'll make that an async function for now, and inside of here is when we'll initialize our Stripe library and then create a payment intent. And I'm going to go ahead and instantiate the Stripe library that we imported, and I'm going to pass it my secret key. Then what I'm going to do is call out to the payment intents method and create a new payment intent. I'm going to assign that to payment intent. And for the purposes of this tutorial, I will just give it a fixed amount and currency. In Stripe, tell us and recommend that as soon as you know the amount and the currency and any information about the checkout or when a user enters the checkout flow to create a payment intent. A payment intent can always be updated later or deleted, uh, so it's recommended that you do that as soon as you know that amount. Now once that payment intent is created, all we're going to do now is return props back to our page and we're going to send along that payment intent. You'll see when we refresh the page, we have our Stripe payment intent. And that's all the information we need now to go ahead and implement on the front end a input to capture card details and then confirm that and send it along to Stripe, passing it along some data from this intent and that is it. But as you'll see, when we refresh this page, we have a new payment intent being created each time we refresh. And that's not a wise thing to do. What Stripe recommend is that you create a payment intent, one payment intent for the checkout for a user. So if anybody drops out of the funnel, you can track that accordingly. And you can always update intents later or delete them or recreate them if necessary but it is nice to just create it once and update it when applicable. So we're now going to install a new dependency so we can set a cookie on the server. And I'm going to be using the Nuki's library. So now that's installed inside of my code editor, I will just go below here and I will insert, I will then import parse cookies and set cookie from Nuki's. Now inside of get server props, I will create a new variable called payment intent. And I would like to store a new cookie called payment intent ID. But first of all, we need to uh, pass our context and we can get context from the get server side props function. Now, if a payment intent ID exists inside of our cookies, we'd like to retrieve the existing payment intent. So we can use Stripe to do that. If we pass in the payment intent ID, that will make a call to Stripe to return the payment intent. And at that point, we really don't need to do anything else. We can just return the payment intent as we did before, but at this time it is the one that we created in a previous window or session. Now, if there is no payment ID, then what we'd like to do is we would like to create a new payment intent. Then we would like to call set cookie, pass in the context again, which is given to us from get server side props. Then inside of here, we would like to call the cookie payment intent ID, and then we'll actually send in the payment intent dot ID. And then we'll just return the payment intent to the page as normal. Now if we start our server, if we refresh the page, we'll have a new payment intent created and that cookie would have been set. And if we refresh the page again, no matter how many times we refresh this page, you will see that it uses the same payment intent. And that's because we have a cookie saved now. 
in our browser that is abstracted whenever the page is loaded and it makes a call to Stripe to get all of the information about that payment intent. Excellent. Now we can see our payment intent has an ID and if we head over to the Stripe dashboard and we have a look in our payment section and we have a look at the latest payment that's came in, you'll see that we have the same payment intent here and we have all the information that was created about this intent. So we can see that the amount is here, the currency, and it is an incomplete payment intent because there is no customer payment method set at all. See information about the timeline and as we do more, this timeline will obviously be updated to reflect any updates or the actual successful payment or confirmation of that payment. We can obviously add descriptions and we could do that and update that intent later if we wanted to. We can assign any metadata such as the receipt email. And then if we scroll down, we can see all of the activity. And if we click on this request to create a payment intent, you'll see we can see the request parameters that we passed in inside of the get server side props method. So we passed in the amounts and the currency. Now that's all there is to creating the server side element to create a payment intent. Previously, you may have seen implementations where this is done inside of a API route. Now let's start working on the client side. We need a way to capture a user's card and process the payment. The Stripe payment side API requires a payment method and as we've seen before in the Stripe dashboard, there is no payment method already provided. Obviously, if you had a user already or you had any user context, you may already have that and want to pass that along when you create the intent. But for the purposes of this tutorial, we don't and we need to handle that on the front end. So we're going to install a few client-side libraries now. I'm installing the Stripe JS and the Stripe React Stripe JS libraries. Now inside of my checkout.js page, I'm going to import the load stripe method and the elements component from React Stripe JS. Now I'm going to create a new promise and that is simply going to call load stripe and then I need to pass in my publishable key. You can get your keys from the Stripe dashboard by going to the, the developer section and clicking API keys. Now that we have the Stripe promise, we can head down and then we can invoke the elements component. So I'm just going to copy what we have rendering out at the moment. I'm simply just going to return elements and I'm going to pass in the Stripe promise to Stripe elements provider. And I'm simply going to return what we had before. So we're just wrapping the provider elements around any of our existing component data. And all we're doing right now is returning the props and rendering those to the screen. Next, let's go ahead and create components in the root folder inside of components. We'll call this checkout form. Now inside of checkout form.js, I'm literally just going to create a very simple checkout form function. And this will just return a form to the page. It will pass a, a function handle submit to the forms on submit handler. And that's all it will do for now. It will prevent any refresh of the page with eprevent default. And then inside of the checkout.js page, we'll just go ahead and import that form. Then inside of our page, We'll go ahead and we'll remove where we're returning the props and we'll just invoke that checkout form. What I'd also like to do at this point is pass along the payment intent. So we knew from previously that we get this payment intent object. So let's pass that along to the checkout form. To get that payment intent, I will destructure payment intent because that is the only prop we're passing down and we'll pass that along to the checkout form. Now inside of checkout form, we now need to import the card element, use Stripe and use elements hook. Once these are imported inside of checkout form, we'll just call these hooks and assign them to Stripe and elements. And these will be useful when we're doing some work inside of handle submit in just a moment. So at this point, the payment intent is created with Stripe, but it is not successful, hasn't succeeded. There's been nothing to confirm it done. So what we need to do now is actually make a call to Stripe to confirm the payment intent. So I'm just going to destructure from the response that comes back from the method we're about to call any errors and also the payment intent status. We'll await stripe.confirm card payment. Confirm card payment requires the client secret and we have that given to us from the payment intent prop that we passed along to the checkout form. If there is any error at all, we will throw a new error and we'll pass along the error message. If the status is succeeded, we'll alert payment made. We'll then catch any error and we'll also alert that error as well. Since the payment intent was created on the server before the page had loaded, and in this example, we have no context of the user whatsoever and there is no payment method, we need to create some kind of payment method that we can pass to this function as a second argument. And we'll do that now. Inside of the form, let's make a call to card element and render that to the page. We'll also go ahead and create a button 
that is of type submit we'll also disable the button if there if that strike promise is not resolved yet now when we submit this form what we'd like to do is we'd like to capture all the data inside of card elements and pass it along to confirm card payment so what we can do inside of here because we invoked the hook elements and we've not yet used it we can pass along we can now pass payment method and the payment method will be a card and we can use elements get element and then we'll pass a reference or a component which is a reference to itself into that function now if we start our server you will see we now have the input for a credit card number and if we insert the default stripe and a valid expiry and CVV and a zip code and click pay now you'll see that payment was made successfully and if we head to the stripe dashboard and refresh this page using that previous payment intent we updated it you can see the timeline has been updated and it has now been successful and we have a bit more information about the payment intent itself and we can see that we have a new charge we see all we can see all the data that was passed as well right now we have a successful flow for creating a payment intent with next.js now while this is great there are a few flaws if we refresh this page we are still using the payment intent that we created previously and obviously that's not good a payment intent can be only checked out once so what we need to do is now we need to remove that from our cookies so next time somebody views the page or if i revisit the page i will then create a new stripe intent so inside of checkout form i will import destroy cookie from nukies and then where my payment is successful i will go ahead and i will destroy that cookie and the cookie name was payment intent id we'll also pass in null for the first argument because we have no context on the client next it would be useful if we could display some success or error messages to the user so i'm going to import use state from react then inside of my functional instantiate those hooks and then whenever my payment is successful instead of alerting to the user i will call set checkout success and i will set that to true and instead of alerting a message to the user i will set a checkout error and that will simply be error.message now before i render the form what i'd like to do is check if the checkout success is truthy and if it is i would like to just return a paragraph that is so that is all working at that point lastly we just need to display some kind of error to the user and i will just return the error and i will just style that color as red and that will be presented to the user if there is any error whatsoever now back inside the browser you may have to delete all of the cookies or the specific cookie using the dev tools for the payment intent id because that payment intent id hasn't been removed and because we've already ran the function and handle submit we can't now delete it because that token already exists so once that's removed if we use a test card from stripe that will force 3d secure we can add a valid expiry and all of the information and we hit pay now you will see that we'll now be prompted with the 3d secure test payment page and at this point we can complete or we can fail the authentication and in this case we'll just confirm it and now that's confirmed you'll see that we have payment successful thank you very much for taking the time to follow along with this tutorial there is lots of improvements that can be made and i'll leave that up to you some of the recommendations by stripe is that you add a loading spinner to the checkout so that submit button could have a loading status an icon or even just disabled while that payment is being processed and confirmed and also it may be useful to add a webhook that listens to the success of a payment intent that is if a user leaves the page before it's had time to respond uh, you can then trigger your own behavior and mark the order as paid for via a webhook um, this article is available on Dev2 where you can follow along at your own pace and read uh, a bit more where I've gone into a little bit more detail in some places. But if you've liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you loved it and you'd like to see more of it, please subscribe to my channel. It means a huge amount and I will continue to create more of this content if you subscribe and you want to see it.